Praise God. Happy to share with you another beautiful verse from the Bible. This is from Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Why don't you just read this verse and hold that psalm? So comforting. How the Lord is compassionate. He's so very compassionate and beyond imagination. One can never imagine. You can never know the depth of his compassion. So he heals the broken hearted. Often, this happens in many of our lives. Many times in our lives, we often find ourselves broken hearted. No one can understand. No one can mend it. And except the Lord, no one will ever can make it right. I know many times we go through such kind of a situation. We find ourselves helpless, nobody to help. And we itself, we ourselves lose our hope. What more can I say than that? The most helpless thing is losing hope in ourselves. Even though anybody could be there, but still if you lose your hope, and there's nothing. And when do we lose hope in ourselves is when we don't have faith in Jesus. When we lose our faith in Him, that is when we lose everything. Oh, let me just reminds me of an incident in the Bible. That's Naomi, husband of Elimelech. I mean, her husband is Elimelech, and Naomi. They Naomi and um, her husband they travel from Bethlehem because of famine to Moab, and uh, they had two sons, and two of them also got married to Moabites. Or for and Ruth. And Naomi's husband also died. And her two sons also died. And she became a widow. And nonetheless, no one was there. Even her two sons are gone. Well, it's a very, very pathetic condition. She was in another country, not in her own place. It's Bethlehem. They belong to Bethlehem, but now they are in Moab. Now, she's got a, she's she's left with no choice but to return to her homeland, Bethlehem, and but she has to settle the two daughter-in-laws, orphan Ruth, and she advises them to stay back at Moab because it's better for them. That's a hometown. But they, one of them goes back, but Ruth stays with her. Her mother-in-law. Now you might be thinking, what is there? See, here you find a heartbroken situation. She loses her husband, and only hope is in her two sons, and two of them also lost. And what you have in in those days, it's a very pathetic condition when you lose all the male members and you're left as a widow and no children. And it's very pathetic. That's the end of the day. And you know what? Naomi became so very terrified. She, 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 she says that, call me, not Naomi. Naomi is 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 actually, um, is 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 means pleasant actually. And she she tells, call me Mara. Mara means is bitter because a life my life is bitter turned bitter. Such was the state of her condition. Broken hearted. Mighty children. We we may not be going into such situation, but ultimately sometimes we may have to. Maybe even smaller things at an unexpected time, you know, can cause you great mishap and broken-heartedness and such was that situation and you know what though Naomi was 
was helpless. Help came from nowhere. And that's from, you know, Ruth decided to stay with Naomi, whatever may come. Your God is my God. So look at that. Because Naomi had committed to her God. And she did not go back to that uh, pagan worshipping more. She came back to Bethlehem. You know, so that is where you need to know. You choose God and God never leaves you. That is the condition. He never leaves you, mind you. And look at the condition of Naomi. Nothing was there. Everything is lost. No hope. And Ruth, what, she, what can she do? If she was a male member, then there is some hope. But she's a woman. Nothing can be done. But then they go on to Bethlehem and thereafter... And you just read the book of Ruth, you'll know everything, what happens. And ultimately, they find Boaz, Boaz and Boaz was, uh, you know, was giving them a lot of things. And ultimately, they found grace in that place. And Ruth and Boaz got married and they bigot Obed and they Obed bigots Jesse. Jesse, David, and you see that Jesus, son of David. You find the, in the book of the Matthew, all this lineology. And so you can understand. She, she thought that is the end of her life and it's bitter. And she would have not imagined. Who would have ever imagined such, such a kind of thing can happen in her life? God sees things not as we see them. God is always at his work. He will do what he has promised, what he has said he will do. And he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. My dear children, if God can do greater things from nowhere, there is no hope at all in the life. You might be looking at your life. I don't have any hope. I don't have any future. My future is so bleak. Everything is lost. And I don't have any hope. My life is so bitter. Mighty children. God heals the broken hearted. And he binds up the wounds. If you have been wounded by others. By things which are happening. Which have happened. And so broken hearted. And my heart is broken. What will I do? I don't have any hope. Mighty children. Believe in God. God is compassionate. He's compassionate on you. If he is compassionate on Naomi, Ruth, he's also compassionate on you. And you know, when Jesus was there, another situation happened. Another widow, widow of nine, she lost her only son also. And what happened is, you know, she happened to see Jesus. As they, they, they happened to cross each other. And she found Jesus there. And rather Jesus found her. Whatever you might say. Because they cross each other. It was rather unplanned. But in Jesus' life it was planned already. That we know. And you know what? He was moved with compassion. He touched that body. And the man became alive. And he gave that man to that woman. And she was so comforted. You know, when I was reading through that story, most of the city, most of the people in that city was there in that funeral. But what could they do? The whole world was there with him, but nothing could be done. But this one, Jesus, who is our Savior, if he is with us, it's more than this world. He can do more than what this world can do. More than what anybody can do. Because God is with you. He will take you through. Don't worry about a broken heartedness. He, if you are wounded, God will heal you today. Trust in Him. Trust in Him. Come, out, come to His presence. You know, that Jesus and that widow of nine crossed each other. And it, it might have been a chance, but then it's already in His sight, already pre-planned. Today, if you go into his presence, he will be moved with compassion. He'll heal your wound. He will be healing your broken heartedness. And that's for sure. He will make your life peaceful. Peace will rule over you. God will bless you. 
Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, and thank and praise you, Lord. Those of them who are hearing with brokenheartedness and with a lot of, lot of wounds in their heart, Lord, heal them. You are a God full of compassion. Let your peace fill them, fill their life. Relieve them, release. I release them in the name of Jesus. God bless them, heal them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.